Hello networkers and welcome back to another episode of Ask the Network Engineer and in this episode I'm going to answer a question that was posted by Mads and uh, I'm going to kind of just uh, paraphrase what his question is. So Mads has a co-worker or a friend who works at an ISP. He's a network engineer but he has transitioned or he is now getting into virtualization with the VMware and Hyper-V. Now Mads is a network engineer and uh, he has about 13 years of experience. That's a really good foundation of experience. So of that 13, seven of it is with servers and six of it is with networking. And with the networking, as you would expect it, he does more on the LAN campus side with switches, which probably means routers, firewalls, wireless, things like that. And he wants to only do networking. So I guess his question really is, um, is it a good field for network engineers to transition with their networking skills and move into a virtualization kind of specialty? I have a lot of opinions about this. Let's get started. Uh, okay, it's really a pet peeve because I've seen articles talk about this and I'm like, that's not really true, but I'm kind of jumping ahead here. Let me just kind of back up here. When we talk about virtualization, there's only two types. There is, well, actually there's desktop, but let's keep it simple in terms of day center focus, okay? So you have server virtualization and you have network virtualization. When we talk about server virtualization, that basically means creating a large virtual server environment like using VMware or using Hyper-V, Microsoft's server virtualization product, okay? You create multiple virtual machines and you can actually move them to different host servers, okay? Pretty simple enough. Network virtualization deals more with like MPLS or really be fair with layer three VPNs and layer two VPNs. So layer two VPNs is something like VPLS, L2TP um, V3 and layer three VPNs are things like MPLS and VRF or easy virtual networks or EVN, which is a Cisco particular thing. Okay. So again, MPLS and VPLS, for example, those are truly examples of network virtualization. You could put tunneling in there. You could say VLANs, but they're not really treated as network virtualization. Because for MPLS, these are used more for um, ISP environments, where an ISP can have their particular network and they can virtualize it to support different customer networks. And they're doing MPLS because they can do more of a separation of traffic, but also with routing. So if you are preparing for your little CCDE tests, that's a big thing. They talk about um, MPLS and why um, service providers are using that is to provide that kind of separation for the customer networks. So again, that's really what the main two things are server virtualization and with network virtualization. When it comes to networking with server virtualization, you're talking about the virtual access switches as I call them. So with VMware, for example, I'm not, I don't have much experience with Hyper-V. My experience is more with VMware, but not as an expert. Uh, again, I'm a network person, so I don't focus too much on server virtualization. But with VMware, um, you can set up um, D switches or distributed switches. Um, but more detailed, you can actually deploy a Cisco Nexus 1000V, which is basically a virtual access switch that exists um, as a virtual machine really on a VMware host. And then from there, I can basically have the virtual network ports kind of on the virtual machines added to particular VLANs on that virtual switch. Okay, we call that a virtual topology. And that networking is very simple. Like doing any kind of configuration on the Nexus 1000V is basically all layer two stuff. There's no advanced level kind of stuff that goes on. So if you're doing server virtualization and if you are going to do anything with the virtual access switches like the 1000V, you're very limited of what you're going to do there. Because those servers, those virtual environments, 
they still need to plug into a backbone, into a core environment. And that's where networking comes in. That has nothing to do with server virtualization. Basically, again, they have virtual or internal access switches that are basically plugging into a core. Now, in bigger environments, they are plugging into access or leaf um, switches, which are then plugging into an actual spine. But that'll be treated more of a three-tier topology. But really, it is a two-tier topology that we're looking at here. But again, it is the core itself that you're doing the heavy lifting of what the networking technology is going to be for spanning tree, you know, for the switching technologies, the routing technologies that's still happening on the core layer. That's not happening on the virtual machines or on the virtual access switches that are on the Hyper-V host systems or the VMware host systems. So again, as the network engineer, you will be working mainly with the distribution and the core layer in the environment. Like once again, with the switching technologies, the routing technologies, the data center technologies, like all the DCI stuff that's out there, OTV, Fabric Path, that's network engineering responsibilities, okay? And when it comes to access level switches, again, these virtual hosts will have these virtual access switches Network engineers don't really work with access switches anymore. I have seen that. I have basically has I have encouraged that for several years, even in particular environments I was a part of. When I was working for the Department of Energy, okay, we had our different level of teams. I was strongly responsible for the backbone core switches. That was that was my responsibility of maintaining and preserving. Then I had like my other um, members of my team, which are more like mid-level network engineers. They took care of some of the distributions that connected to some of the various buildings. Okay, I gave them those responsibilities. But for some of the other buildings that had access level switches, we didn't do that. We may have done some of the general setup, you know, not me, but other members of my team. But we had the server administrators. Because remember, if you're talking about server virtualization, that's the system administrators, that's the system engineers. That's what they do. That's what they specialize in. So we basically gave them access to the access switches. So they went ahead and configured the, the port speeds and the VLANs. They did all of that. We as network engineers, we did not do those functions. So again, and this goes way back for me, like more than, yikes like 10 years ago, okay? So the idea that a person who is taking on server administration or server versusization roles and doing a little bit of networking on there, that's the access level switches. That's not the backbone. That's not the WAN infrastructure. That's not the DCI technologies that we're talking about here. Yes, you could talk about VXLAN because VXLAN is something that you're building tunnels, but again, you know, that's more like saying that I'm enabling a certain kind of tunneling protocol between particular things. There's still the infrastructure that still has to be intact. And the network engineers are the ones that truly get involved with that, not with server virtualization. The last rant, I guess, I want to talk about virtualization and, well, server virtualization and how it brings up networking. So from a server perspective in today's environments, as of 2017, if you're watching this video two years from now, then things will probably change. You are going to deploy your server environment in two different ways, okay? The, the most common way, which is what I think we have all done at some level, is a, is a traditional server infrastructure design. And that basically means that there is a server layer, which are basically virtual servers, okay? Then there is a storage layer, whether it's iSCSI, fiber, uh, fiber channel, or fiber channel over ethernet, which is becoming very popular and I prefer and recommend towards my customers if they have that, and they typically do have that. Um, and the third layer is networking. I always kind of see that and I kind of like scratch my head like, okay, they're saying networking like the virtual access switches on their on those servers and with the the storage devices 
or are they saying the actual network like what we would do like the data center core and access switches and the and the technologies that we would deal with for administrating okay and that's pretty much what that means but there's another kind of server implementation that you can do now it's a new thing now, probably, that'll probably be a particular off topic I can actually talk about, which is the um, hyper converged infrastructure or the ACI deployment. So for this is basically saying we're taking the network. I'm oh, sorry. We're taking the server layer. We're taking the storage layer and we're taking the network layer and we are consolidating them together. What do you mean you're consolidating the network layer? You can't consolidate the core and those technologies. You can't consolidate the WAN connectivity. It doesn't work like that. You're still plugging into some kind of a network infrastructure. You're connecting to some kind of a framework. Okay. So if you're saying consolidating that, then that implies that you're just creating virtual access switches. That's what you mean. But when they say network, I cringe because that is not how that is represented. It is simply just one part of the network. It is not saying that the entire network is consolidated within an, H, an HCI deployment. That is not, not true at all. And I just want to make sure I get that off my chest because a lot of documentation and articles are saying exactly that. It's consolidating these three layers. The network is a small part of that. What we do as engineers for data center environments, especially with my experience, what I have been doing for several years, no, the network is still a separate part. So I think server networking is different from network networking. So Mads, uh, so there's nothing wrong with you staying with networking, okay? You have the years of experience, that's good. And if you are in environment and in demand, you know, then there's nothing wrong with staying with networking, okay? Now, there's one thing to keep in mind, which I have said in various episodes, that the more skills you have, it does make you more valuable. So your friend, which is a networking guy, moving into server versusization, that's another skill set that he or she has. That's a, that's a big thing. That means he has he or she has networking, and now they have server virtualization. That's a very good combination of stuff so that if he or she wanted to go somewhere else, um, that's, that would look very impressive on a resume. The more skills you have, the more opportunities will um, come up for you. Okay, so that's really important in this kind of day of age that more experience is really good. So, I mean, like I said, I, I do have some server virtualization experience. So I do have some. I'm not an expert, so I don't tell you guys that I'm an expert with that. But I do have experience with that. So, but if you are a networking guy and you're doing networking, then I'm assuming that you're doing a lot of networking um, areas. Like you're doing wireless and maybe voice and a lot of security. And, of course, lands with those technologies. If you're doing all of that, then that's a good set of skills that you can have and it will make you very employable as a network person in the future. So you do not need to, oh my God, I got to get into virtualization like right now. Well, you can, but I would recommend network virtualization, but that's more common for server provider environments. And in that case, that is also another good field that you could actually get into. And we're done with this episode. So if you have any questions about being a network engineer, post those questions below in the comments and your question will come up in a future episode on this channel. So thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe and support us at routehub.net. We got a new training series out focused on deploying the Cisco ASA with the Firepower Threat Defense software but administrating it using the Firepower Device Manager, which is a new unified web interface for configuring the firewall for its interfaces, security policies, and some of the next generation features as well, like URL filtering, application control, even filtering based on a user's identity, which is a very common thing that people like to implement because they get to see what their users are doing in the environment, 
or what they should not be doing in the environment. So check that out on our website. It's a very, um, very cool, nice, simple training series that we just released. And till next time, keep networking.